How's everybody doing today? Great, I hope. This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and we are going to take a look at inverse functions today. That's right. Hold on to your horses, because we're going to take a look at parts 1, 2, and 3 in this video, and we're going to save part 4 for a separate video. So let's take a look at an inverse function given a table of values first. So here we are. Inverse functions part 1, find the inverse given a table of values. The four functions on the left-hand side are represented by a table of values. Their corresponding inverse function is represented on the right-hand side. So for example, number 1, we've got 1, 2, and 3 as our x's, then 4, 5, 6 for our y's. Notice the inverse function. You merely switch the x and y values to come up with the inverse function's table of values. Same thing for number 2, and likewise for number 3. Based on that, what would the values be for table number 4? The x's would be negative 2, 6, and negative 4, while the y's would be 3, 5, and 7. All right, that's it. Pretty straightforward stuff. So, the big thing here, interchange, x and y values. That's it. No big deal. Now for part two, same kind of idea. Inverse functions, find the inverse given a set of coordinate points. Well, we've got one, two, three, four points. One, two, three, four sets of coordinate points. So we're going to just interchange our x and y values. So if we do that to our first one, we'll get three, two. For our second pair, we'll have four and negative two. For our third pair, we'll get six and five. And then for our last pair, we will have 5 and negative 3. Now make sure our inverse notation is good. Be sure you put your braces there or brackets. And then make sure you put a comma in between each set of points. That's it. That's all you have to do. No big deal. Now we're going to combine those two ideas right there when we take a look at a picture. Because sometimes you'll be presented with a graph. Check out our graph. So we're going to combine those last two ideas from before. Now, what I like to do when I'm given a graph is go ahead and come up with the table of values for the function. First thing i got to do is come up with what the coordinates are. So this spot right here, coordinates are going to be negative 5, 4. Over here, we've got negative 1, negative 3. And then this point over here is 1, 2. And our last point over here is 5, 1. So I'm going to use those points and create my table of values. So negative 5, 4 will go here. And then I'll have negative 1 and negative 3 goes there. 1, 2, and then lastly, 5, 1. So that's all I have to do to create the table of values for the function. Now the inverse function, you guys already know what to do with that. Just go ahead and switch your x and y interchange your x and y coordinates all right so that's not the hard part now what we're going to do next because we've got to analyze this it says is the inverse a function explain why or why not so what we're going to do is erase those pieces from around there and we're just going to plot those points one at a time so go ahead and get those points plotted and let's see what that looks like now after we get our points plotted we're going to need to connect the dots in the order that we came up with for our table of values so that after we get them connected Pretty straightforward stuff. Now I know this looks a little bit confusing because we've got lines going all over the place, but check it out. There's a test that you guys should remember from al your algebra days, whether a given table of values could be a function. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring out the vertical line. Everybody say hello to the vertical line. Hello, vertical line. Yeah, it's good to see everybody again today. Now, in order to be a function, these this must pass the vertical line test. Is there anywhere along here, if I move my vertical line from left to right, or is there anywhere where my vertical line is touched twice? Ooh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of spots. So one of them is going to be right here in this spot, and another one is right here in this spot. So that's two times. So this is the inverse is not a function. Explain why or why not. Which means we're going to have to write a sentence. So your sentence will go a little something like this. The inverse is not a function because it fails the vertical line test. Period. End of discussion. Booyah. You're done.
Now, don't mess that up and call it the pencil test because that's incorrect. It is not called a pencil test. It's called the vertical line test. So make sure you write that sentence correctly with the correct terminology. That's it for these three examples. Numbers one, two, and three, we are done. And we will take a look at example number four, which is finding inverse functions and proving functions are inverses by using algebra in the next video. So that's it for this. Peace out. I'll catch up with you soon.